So today I would like to read a fragment from my book written between 2013 and 2022. It's Occultosophia Hermetic Theoria, if I didn't bore you yet to death. Uh, the Mystery of a Human Being. So, is it not the case that the secret of our greatness, if it is not in Sopo, comes from a division of our being? Is it not that it comes from the ignorance of ourselves, which we desperately want to cure by an act of art? We run from one thing to another, trying to take this or that for a certainty, and then something else for an illusion. As soon as we reach for something, be it a precious trophy or the blade of a naked knife that cuts our palms when we try to grasp it, we are robbed of the complexity and depth that can cause terror in all mature souls. <clears throat> Souls that were once capable of a towering vision, an overarching vision. We fall into a fixation around which our being wraps around, becoming its slave, further blinded by the world we lo no longer see. While we only unravel and not this ideal of certainty, we suffer from the state of inner fragmentation that seeks conformity with everything else. We love, we hate, we long for things, we believe, we grow cold, we inflame, disengage, co-suffer, explore a kaleidoscope of synergy of all our animal, human, abysmal and divine aspects of thought and feeling, only to find that we rarely find ourselves. Truly, we seldom transcend and thus become complete in this world. When we run to the ideal world in search of solace, we love this land that will not let us go. And when we side with this world, we fall straight into it headlong. If we are not permeated by both, if we are not permeated by all these worlds in chaos and order, we will never become complete. One can be content with the perception of a saint, who accepts the world passively and humbly, and looks at the beauty of a little bird from the perspective of a dead person. Or one can wear a battle armor around the mind and become a dissident who moves between compassion and a helpless hatred. And when we become like that for a while, our nature rebels. For we long to become human again. For we tear our garments, the cry exe homo. We go beyond the form. We are caught in it, so that we want to throw it off, cast it away like snakes. Then we become snakes and look with longing eyes at those touched by feeling. Rare cases of honest, authentic devotion to one's true nature. Was it the real our perception and thrall of others that we long for? There is nothing there, we know that for sure, or is it so? Was it that innocent, unspoiled feeling of the first embraced, the exhaustion of the desperate, or the eyes torn by war, staring tearfully at the dead bodies of those close to them, the traumatized soldier who, when firing the next round of shells, suddenly realizes that he himself is the death he is running from, seeing that one is just a puppet playing its games against humanity? A puppet for the controllers playing a game of chess against responsible, principled freedom. Or is it the conquerors who look over the lands with a hawk like gaze? The past emperors, the beggars who remember the sliver of ancient dignity and pride through their dirty cloaks and now oversee the land of the lowliest? Perhaps it is an old woman who has been dying for years from the wounds of the past and who retreats weeping into stern concern for the last man she never loved indeed. At least she could swear she did not, as time passes by. Or is it the man who counts the money and drunk with power seeks reason in his coldness? Or is it the white jacket who seeks and locks spiritual promises while feigning his deluded flock with a condescending smile? Or these who hate with honesty? Or these cruel ones who sadistically wash themselves in the blood of murder and retaliate with a heartbreaking truth in their eyes that the world has broken them in a childish malice? when they kill without a war. Or those who never felt anything and lived their lives through pleasure or through pain, either on the backs of others gaining and losing things not even considered worthy by the gods. Or those who are compassionate, running from time to time to tear the world apart, their robes, and in the end not even feeling compassion for themselves in a pitiful state. So where is the answer to them all? When the gods are silent, that is quite profound, and then who may understand them sees the graveyard of all great things, which are not called, that a sliver of them is no longer needed. 
because the world was taught wrong and deceived. How can one demand understanding of greatness from a slave who has never tasted it, or such ideas as love, humaneness, happiness from those who live in their shadows, surrogates who never ask why? Perhaps their soul cries silently to itself, but it quickly, but is quickly replaced by another temporary thing that imprisons it in an animal farm of illusions, and before it exhausts its passionate voice, it provides an untrained brief sadness or an unfeeling passing thought. On the contrary, with eyes wide open and torn by talents, it brings forth the greatest of art. Perhaps once claiming this title, a mask of the numinous, trapped in a human form that savors all its brightness and its shades, and its darkness to express itself, to constitute itself, to understand, perceive, and after the form is discarded, to embrace the world as it is, worthy and humane. Beyond the pain and anguish, the suffering torments, to what we conquer, we refer to the old ideals to keep them in our hearts, to gauge how they can be appropriate in the present time. We are comforted by great ideals that we try to internalize, if we would live according to the things of the present. If not as well as puppets, we are constantly suffering or wasting our energies like fools chasing things that punished us in the past. Everything that is separated never found itself and is tired of itself must keep the burden of necessity until the destinies say a word that only Thanatos understood. You will suffer no more. The Brahman embraces and the world's retreat. Those who bring destruction, if they are honest, are guided by the same hope, but they provide more suffering than pain, daring to believe that they will end all the worlds to end the spectacle. Those who preserve reform much wiser, they can alleviate it. Those who create, however, preserve the movement of the twofold kind. In the end, according to a Hindi story, even Rudra, the destroyer of worlds, who devastated them, became Vishnu, the preserver of the order of this one. And perhaps, when not judged by destinies, the tired understanding of total freedom, if it does not fall prey to nihilism, constantly wants to create a greater world to express this energy of movement than in life and change, and therefore it is subject to diamond transients, yet superior to the phenomenal world, it is time that governs energy, matter that gives it form, and consciousness that gives it order. I remember that I was writing this chapter near the Baltic Sea, in Svintoje, in Lithuania, after committing a ritual to the Samogitian gods at the Alka Shrine. Then again, the loveliest of ladies that I engaged with, was swimming in the Baltic Sea, I was sitting there among the sand dunes and writing this chapter down. So, as let it be an invitation. Thank you.